by the sea. Good morning, it's April 3rd here in uh, beautiful spring Nova Scotia and then today I'm going to find some squash in my tulip garden. Hi, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. Hey there, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. I thought I'd walk you through a ridiculously easy, cheap way that I've come up with to make use of old windows, the kind that you'd find on the side of the road with the double hung kind. So I had some 4x4s and I stacked them like that if you could sort of see it. I had one tier and then just one at the back and then I needed to see that one at the bottom and I needed a way to do the diagonal piece and I could have, could have got some bought some lumber and cut it into a triangle and, and that sort of thing. But I, was just, I just had, I live like a good drive away from where the hardware store is. And um, I mean, it's I don't know, about half an hour each way. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's a necessity, it's a mother of invention. I, I wanted to get something planted in this space on that day. And I just, that's what I had. I had some 4x4s, I had some windows, and I had a bit of 1x3 strap. So I just put a piece of 1x3 from the front to the back on a diagonal. And then I just jammed leaves in on that space to hold the heat and then you know the leaf uh, layer there is about four inches thick but it's warm in there you would, wouldn't believe it's you know on days when it's zero if it's sunny it's it's, it's 20 25 in there so the leaves are doing their job it's almost an ideal setup in a way because if it gets too warm the leaves will let some heat out it's not airtight there's something to be said for having flaws in your design. I put these nails at the bottom, see the little <laughs> shingle nails? So it won't slide down off the end, right? And yeah, I should have scraped the paint off the windows and primed them and glazed them and blah, 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 blah. But sometimes you just got to get her done. So I <laughs> just threw that on there and I had a couple of rocks holding it down. And uh, it seems to work just fine. So I'm really happy with that, that construction and just uh, there's something to be said for just coming up with a crude, having a, you know, before you even start a project, just saying, well, I'm going to do this today and I'm going to just figure it out as I go and we'll just see what happens. And maybe I don't get it done. Maybe it's unsolvable, but maybe it is solvable. So you can see me there working with the trowel and the, the soil is, is loose and loamy. And just the way you want the soil to be, I've removed all, if you were watching some previous films, I removed all the leaves. There was a bit of stuff in there. I prepared the soil before I lifted the lid off, right? So I removed all the leaves and stuff. But there was a bit of hard, frozen stuff around the edges. And I just chopped it off with my shovel and just stuck that around the sides on the surface. It'll melt. It'll melt, you know. So uh, the only bit of hard stuff has been chipped out and moved to the side. Other than that, the soil is all nice and soft. A really uh, windy day. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of sewing that I want to get done right now, and I'm having <laughs> issues with wind because uh, I've got to be careful not to blow away, like have my packs of seeds blow away. You can see things moving around. Even in that protected area there, you can see the the leaves moving around. Anyway, I just thought I'd... Uh, I get a lot of questions about seed sowing and I get a lot of comments. People will say, um, oh, it's uh, too hard or, you know, a lot of people buy transplants, they don't direct sow and there couldn't be anything more natural or effortless than sowing seeds. The most difficult aspect of sowing seeds is the patience it requires. These say to sow thinly about half an inch deep. Uh, and any of those, it always says about half an inch deep because it doesn't have to be half an inch deep. It has to be about half an inch deep. You don't have to be, you know, too overly sophisticated about these things. Just close enough. You see how I'm making rows here, a hand span apart. My hand span's about eight inches, nine inches, uh, give or take. So you just go a hand span, run a line, hand span, run a line. It's so 
uh, nice <laughs> to have my hands in the ground again. Uh, now on a day like today where it's zero outside, I had to move, you know, work fairly quickly because uh, fingers get numb and they stop working. That's an issue. But uh, yeah, it's nice to just have your hands in the ground and work the soil. Um, I didn't do anything to amend the soil. This garden last year had uh, peas and beans. It had uh, Win uh, Windsor broad beans, which are actually more of a pea than a bean. Um, and uh, even though they're called beans, but they're more like a pea. Uh, if you if you want to get technical about it, and I also had uh, I think like Romano, like a, an Italian bush bean. Anyway, I view those crops as crops that enhance soil because they are nitrogen fixing, right? Their roots fix nitrogen in the soil. So I grew a nitrogen fixing crop in this garden last year, and I covered it with about a foot of leaves, which uh, decomposed to some extent. So to my mind, in my mind, the soil has been enhanced, the soil has been brought back, the soil has been amended, right? So there's nothing else I need to do other than plant. So I'm growing some uh, spinach in here in my garden plan. I plan to put spinach here and since the soil is already thawed and it's getting up to 20 in there or even more on sunny days, now, on the evening, <laughs> it's cold today, it's probably and I get down to minus five or something like that, and I imagine it'll be like zero in that box. But uh, spinach seed can take that. Right? Doesn't mind a bit of cold. I think spinach has got really low germination temperature, maybe five degrees Celsius. I mean, it's not optimal, right? But spinach can start working. It's one of the earliest things you can plant. So uh, why not, right? Uh, this uh, bed will have spinach in it, and then. Uh, Maybe later in the summer, it might, uh, uh, maybe July or something like that, the spinach will probably be done. I don't know, we'll see how long it lasts. And then uh, you plant something else in here. <laughs> you know, I'll probably have the lid off by then. Um, that's the beauty of having those windows on there. You can just lift them off. And once it gets, I don't want to have windows on top of my garden all summer long. I want the rain getting in there. I don't want to be doing that work. Uh, but for this time of year, uh, there's no risk of things running out of water. It's uh, just too cold for that sort of stuff to be going on. Um, but, you know, I might have to water them a bit, but it's really not a big concern. It's just it's cold outside. There's a ridiculous amount of moisture in the soil. Uh, I find that the cold frame lid, the glass, has an effect like a solar still. If you have any and knowledge in that area? It's a survival technique of making water out of uh, well, make water out of any sort of moist. You can, you can even make drinkable water out of your own urine with a solar still. That's not what I'm doing here. <laughs> but anyway, the soil has moisture in it, and what happens is that it uh, there's condensation against the glass, and it drips back down into the garden, uh, almost like a, a rain sort of thing. So. Um, I don't find I have to do a lot of watering maybe once a week this time of year. Uh, I don't know too many people growing transplants inside that have that sort of setup unless they've got some sort of system where they can water from underneath. Um, anyway, another topic. So what have I done here? I, I made a furrow, I put the seeds about half an inch uh, deep, and then I moved the soil uh, back on top of those rows. And now I'm just panning it all down so that it's just just lightly, but so that all the seeds have good contact with the soil. Now I usually speed things up when I'm doing these voiceovers, but I thought I'd do this in real time just to get this particular bed, just to give you a sense of how long it takes, right? I think I'm about nine minutes in here and I'm done. <laughs> I planted a lot of spinach. So uh, once that spinach, I'm you know, putting a bit of water on here, maybe two-thirds of a gallon uh, actually because <laughs> my uh, taps aren't turned on I, I, I broke the ice in my goldfish pond and stole that water from goldfish it's probably full of goldfish poop um, here I am just throwing some uh, chopped up seaweed on top that's that's unnecessary I'm, I'm just I was sitting around and wanted to blow away and I thought it would uh, do uh, uh, do something to preserve the moisture in the soil and I have 
no uh, no worries about the spinach being able to find their way through. I'm putting maybe a quarter inch layer of that on top. I just, you know, it's never good to have bare soil. You do whatever you can to avoid that, even if you're just putting a fine layer. Uh, I find it just, just that little bit I'm putting on there will do wonders to maintain the moisture levels in the soil. And I mean, I'm putting the finest layer on there. Uh, of course, once my plants get big, um, I use more than that. But you see how tightly I put the rows together. Once those are up and they're of a decent size, I will not have the rows that close together. It's just too close for spinach to be growing. Every second row, I will pluck the spinach out and move them to other places in my garden. right? And that'll uh, have a really good effect because by moving those spinach to other places in my garden, they'll be set back a week or so. And so they won't mature at the same rate as the ones that stay in there. So it'll be like having succession planted two different crops of spinach, even though I planted them all at the same time. right? Because whenever you move a plant, it upsets it a little bit and it takes a little while to recover. So you plant a whole bunch of stuff in your cold frame, a bit too close to really you know, grow together. And then once they're up and they're maybe four or five inches high, whenever they're of a size where you feel confident you can move them without breaking them too badly, if you can take it, right? If they're tiny, two inches tall, they're really tough to move. I like to have things about four or five inches tall when I move them, at least. Uh, so once they start getting that big, they're going to start getting crowded. And that's, by then it should be some point in April. And I can move them to other places in my garden. I'll leave some of them in there. And, you know, from the amount of spinach I put in that bed, I can probably spinach that get removed from that bed will fill a 4x10 bed, probably. Uh, and, and, and there'll be plenty enough room for everything to grow comfortably. So that's all done. Right? That's uh, a cold frame that took minutes to build using junk. And just a little good old fashioned uh, uh, redneck <laughs> hillbilly ingenuity, right? Just, just figure it out, piece it together. Uh, I don't know why I get irked when people, everything has to be perfect and, and straight. And, uh, and that's nice, and I, I enjoy the aesthetics of it, but uh, gardening shouldn't be hard, it should be easy. And so you do whatever you can to make it quick and easy. And, and you know, if you got an hour window of time to get stuff done, you, you figure it out, right? So I've been out in my garden now a total of, I don't know, 12 minutes. I got that planted. Here I'm, um, wind's a problem. I'm going to be working with some paper here. Um, and I got to lay it down. And, and uh, I'll show you what I mean in a couple seconds here. But when it's windy like this, you want the, to add weight to the paper. And, and if you wet it like this and let it soak a little bit, it's sort of comes like a paper mache sort of deal. So uh, that's why I'm tossing it around the wheelbarrow. Now there's a whole section of me laying it out there, putting it in strips like that, uh, and it got lost. It's really windy and uh, the camera blew over twice and the lid actually blew down and hit me in the head a couple times. You can see I got to tie it on there. I, I figured out that solution. <laughs> it only got to hit me in the head a few times for me to figure things out. So why is the paper there? The paper's there because uh, the, the base soil in that cold frame is horse manure and there's going to be weeds. I just know there is. As soon as it gets warm, there are going to be weeds. I'm planting uh, some Swiss chard in there and uh, some uh, black magic vegetable kale, which is supposed to be, at least I was told by the guy at Bessie's, like a lacinato kale so we'll see how that turns out but this is the idea and i could i could do the strips the other way but i figured this way would make the best use of the soil where, where i'm sitting is the south side and so against that wall where my knees are there's a bit of shade so the first row is a good eight inches out from that wall so that it won't get so much shade and that's going to be the uh, swiss chart in the first row and the second two rows will be kale uh, these seed packs are kind of neat because they've got this little, and not all seed packs have this, but they got that uh, adhesive strip so you can close them back up after you've used them. For me, my make, <laughs> if you get a pack of kale seeds like this on a windy day, I'm always terrified that one, one gust of wind will blow the seeds out of your hand. Or it'll blow the seed pack and all the seeds will fall out and they're gone. Right? You drop kale seeds on the ground and they disappear the time. Anyway, you put about, you know, you put the seeds in your palm, 
and you, you pick up two or three in your between your index finger and your thumb and you just move your fingers back and forth and make a line <coughs> and, and don't worry about uh, the spacing um, you're gonna thin them anyway right at least that's the way I do it you're gonna thin them as they start to grow I, don't know, I try to I'm trying to space them maybe one or two inches apart but I'm not really wor too worried about it because you're gonna be thinning anyway not uh, I've never planted uh, the SEC's variety but uh, my experience with uh, seeds is that and look at this oh man you want to believe there was some first-class cussing going on when that happened uh, <laughs> that was just unbelievable uh, I was blew over I was not happy about that <laughs> <laughs> I had to put them all back. And <laughs> where did I put my seeds? And where is everything? And oh, did I lose all my seeds? I gotta put the seeds back in the pack so I don't lose them. While I'm messing around with that. Oh, just uh, that's just gardening. <laughs> Stuff happens, you know. I just <laughs> you just gotta roll with it. Uh, anyway, I wasn't very happy about that, so I had to get um, a little bit creative here. I mean, once the lid's down and once that stuff's been on the ground a bit, it sort of melts into the ground and just stays um, but in the initial going it takes uh, you know, you gotta hold it down or it's gonna blow around it's, man, I was so frustrated because I had those just shaped into perfect uh, rectangles I don't know I sound uh, like I'm a bit uh, obsessive here but anyway, <laughs> it's not about that it's, it's about getting the most out of the space you're working with it's not it's not about achieving geometric perfection uh, nothing I do ever seems to achieve perfection uh, when it comes to uh, geometry or carpentry or anything like that. But I am trying to make the best use of the space and I had it all sort of worked out just the way I wanted it. <laughs> just one gust of wind, boom, gone. Uh, anyway, so I put them back in position and uh, it was weird. I had some spare piece there. I didn't quite what to do with it. Anyway, I think these uh, this paper will, will go a long way to uh, preventing weeds in the garden. We'll see how it goes, but I've used this sort of approach uh, in, in other other applications before. I didn't do this last year when I used my cold frames, and I you know I had some weeds, but this year because I've got so much horse manure in there, I just thought I don't want to do any of that. So I just found some sticks and uh, put them on top of the paper, hold it down. <laughs> Pretty simple. Why didn't I do that the first time? I don't know. I'm just being cocky, I guess. See, they're still trying to blow around, man. Um, but anyway, that's all you need to do. Just get some sticks and put them down and continue on. Uh, it's been really windy the last uh, couple days. Uh, so I filmed this, I think, on the, on the weekend. It's now uh, Monday evening when I'm doing this voiceover. Uh, I wanted to do some planting yesterday on Sunday, but it's just way too windy for that. Uh, it would have been impossible because I had to. I wanted to plant underneath one of my... Uh, hoop houses and uh, without tying that down it would just blow away uh, while I was planting so I just decided to wait a couple more days I might even have to go around here the wind seems to pick up around 9 a.m. give or take um, so I might have to go up there some morning at like 5 in the morning when there's no wind and uh, sow some seeds then I got no, no problem with that at all I'm up early every day uh, I think that's a I can't speak for all gardeners, but there's something about being outdoors uh, as the sun's coming up. It's pretty nice. Um, so, uh, what am I doing here? Um, I got a bucket of soil. You can't see it, it's out of the frame, but I got a bucket of soil that I, I took from this garden when I was getting the soil all prepared. And I'm just putting about about a half inch of soil. So I didn't make a, you notice I didn't make a furrow here. Uh, just this is another way you can do it. I didn't make a furrow. I just put the seeds down and now I'm putting about a half an inch of soil over the seeds. And I'm doing this here this way so that the soil will hold the paper down. Right? And then I won't need the sticks anymore because it's that bit of you know it's a little bit of soil on top of the edges of the paper and it'll hold it in place. Um, I don't know if I figured that out or, you know, most of these things you just figure them out by accident. I didn't read that anywhere. <laughs> you just, you do something and it happens to have a good effect. You're like, oh, that was a good, it wasn't even an idea. I was just trying to doing something else. And then you notice 
there's a side benefit of something you did. You can pretend like you were clever. Um, I didn't sit down and conceive any of that. And most of the stuff I figure out happens completely by accident while I'm trying to do thing A and I come up with a, as a result, I have a good idea about thing B by accident. I think a lot of stuff happens that way. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm just, I've just sped the camera. I think at this point I've sped the camera up a little bit just to, because it's fairly repetitive. So I'm just continuing to sow the seeds. And, uh, and the reason I'm, I think this whole film took place over the course of about a half an hour in my garden. And just like in the spinach garden, all the stuff I'm planting here in this bed. This is more stuff than could possibly be grown in a space like this, right? I'm planting enough kale and spinach to fill probably two uh, 4 by 10 beds. Uh, all the greens that I have in this cold frame, they're not going to stay in here. They're all coming out. They're all going to be moved elsewhere and around. Uh, and, and they should be ready to be moved, like at least this is the way it worked last year. They should be ready to be moved. Um, in uh, early, uh, mid-April, late April, sometime around that. That was my experience before. Important late, late April, I should be able to move those from there to elsewhere in the garden, and then I can plant uh, something like a tomato or some sort of heat-loving thing that doesn't mind being moved in the cold frame. So all of this stuff's coming out. So in this tiny two by six, two feet wide by six feet wide space, uh, planting enough greens to fell two, at least two, four by ten garden spaces. Maybe more. We'll see. Um, and if, I, if I'm able, if I have the time, I'll film that as well. <laughs> Just knocked over the microphone. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, so... Uh, We'll just keep it real here. Uh, let's get so continuing to uh, sow. Now I'm moving on to the Swiss chard here. I didn't plant nearly enough Swiss chard last year. Uh, I really like it, and I didn't have enough of it, and I certainly didn't have enough to freeze or put down. I just ran out, like in my stores and my freezer and that sort of thing. It's first week of March. I finally run out of just about everything. I'm all out of kale, I'm all out of beans, I'm all out of everything except my pickled goods, uh, my pickled beets and my pickled uh, cucumbers and pickled beans, and I still have potatoes. So I did a lot, um, we eat a lot of potatoes, I grow a lot of potatoes. Last year I was out of potatoes by, I don't, I don't know, maybe the end of January or something like that, and now I'm into March and I still have a good number of good sized potatoes and they're perfectly fine. Just. <laughs> I did a video on that in the fall. <laughs> Stick them in cardboard boxes. <laughs> Nothing too fancy. Uh, anyway, so I got some soil over there. I'm just sprinkling a little bit of the extra soil around it. I'm using the soil to hold that paper down. Eventually the sticks and stuff will come out of there and it should all just melt together. And now I'm trying to put some uh, water on there carefully, not to add too much. You don't want to cause a river, <laughs> right? You don't want to move the seeds around. You, you want to just gradually layer on the water and build moisture. And that's all the watering I'm going to do. I'll check it next weekend and see. But uh, I'd be surprised if it even needs to be watered next weekend. But that's it. So I'm just untying the little string here and I close the lid and that'll be it. So I don't know. If you were growing these indoors, it would be germinated in a week. Uh, I'd be very surprised if they'll be germinated next week. Uh, just because it, it's not constant heat, right? It gets warm during the day and cold at night. Uh, but they will germinate. Maybe it'll take them two weeks. We'll see. But the difference between growing them under artificial light indoors or in a bow window is that they're directly under the sun here. So once they start to grow, they're going to grow. Uh, not only that, but they're going to be hardened to some extent to the temperature extremes that exist outdoors in the real soil. Anyway, that just about does it. I hope you found that uh, useful and informative and gave you some ideas. And uh, if you like that, uh, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, like us on Facebook, check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.